When I was watching this, I was thinking that I hope Steven Spielberg sees this film. Maybe we could do like a, a double build together. Yes. This, like 2022 is perfect for the Fablemans, the last film show. Um, yeah, I mean, I just a uh, few days ago, I just saw a link uh, of Tim Gray in Variety. Did you see that? You know, oh, yeah? okay. your thoughts are reflected oh, okay. there. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see that. So but. he speaks about three movies: Empire of Light. Yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah. And and you know, he's, he's, he's just said like, okay. Yeah, I'm more, <laughs> I, I see more of a commonality between those two, but they are all homages to the the seventh art. Um, so you are Oscars. Uh, you are India's official Indeed, submission to, uh, to the Oscars, the Oscars yes. so congratulations on Thank that. Yeah. Um, I imagine that a lot of people can approach you and say what their favorite scene is. I'm going to tell you what my favorite scene is. Um, I, I did love the little Kubrick touch, but my favorite scene is, is the cardboard box with the trees. Oh, they leave. Yes, <laughs> that is my favorite scene in the film. I just wanted to let you know where I'm coming from. Oh, wow. Um, so, Michael Haneke said that film lies 24 seconds per minute to find the truth. Um, tell me about the battle that exists here. I know this is a very close and personal story to you. There's yeah. reenactments from your own imaginaire, but also from your own life. Tell me about the, the conversation you're having between realism and the magical thing that is cinema. There, there's a, two worlds are conflicting, are fighting, but yes. they're also coexisting. I think, uh for me, uh, it, that that coexistence is almost like I think the realism and cinema. In between the space, what I call is a bit like dream. You know, it's like to able to be able to dream. And every time I've been to cinema, you know, and I come back, come out, I of course lived someone else's life during those two hours. But I always go back and think that, okay, does it make me dream or I'm more concerned about reality? That what really happened? Did this story really happen? Or what is the truth? But I realize I'm often attracted towards that dreamlike quality. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's over the top film or extremely realistic, I was taken away, transported somewhere, I was moved. You know, and then I said, okay, I love the work, you know, because uh, and and over over the years, I realized also while even talking to a couple of psychiatrists who pointed out to me that, you know, that, oh, you're a filmmaker. Do you know why do you always make 90 minutes to one hour 20 okay. on an average duration? I said, no, he said, it's a technical reason, you know, it's called feature length, you know, 75 minutes and above. I said, no, 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 nothing technical. Who invented that duration? And then I researched everywhere. I said, who invented this duration in cinema? And there's no one name. You know, how did we conclude that we have to make movie of this duration when cinema was invented? Why didn't we say six hour? Why didn't we say 60 minutes? Why mm -hmm. did we come? And so his analysis struck me to the core. He said, he said, I'm psychiatrist, I'll tell you how dreams are made. That when we fall asleep, there's certain darkness envelops us. Then when certain time when unconscious mind gives us a dream, that's usually going to last 85 minutes to 130 minutes. You know, and whether it's a dream or a nightmare, unless you are woken up by something, but that would be the dream cycle. And you guys, whoever was editing the movies, they unconsciously came to conclusion. Series of editors around the world realized this should be the duration. You know, this is what we can sustain. This is what the human attention can mm -hmm. sustain. This is what our heart can take during two hours. Unless, of course, we've been used to seeing movies which are longer, but then those are the dream which are longer. Yeah. But on an average, so this struck me, you know, and I realized, wow, this is what it is, why cinema experience is so amazing to go into that space have that darkness. <laughs> your film, actually, on that point, your film does explore the idea of the death of cinema. I mean, there's 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 uh, uh, an entire sequence that where you 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 destroy cinema with your your bare hands, and it's a really a positive, non-pessimistic film. But then there, there's like this little spurt that you put in there. It's almost as if your film, your how you tackle cinema is, is almost like open heart surgery. <laughs> because you go into the you go into yeah. where film is processed you go into RGB is represented everywhere why did you feel it was important to say hey guys we're we're in trouble right now yeah uh, i felt because for certain reason i think already before pandemic the streaming services then during the pandemic the way we tell and consume stories have changed so much 
you know arrival of digital revolution everything has changed you know so there was something powerful in that going into single screen or cinema hall and experiencing that but uh, along along with celluloid around the world we know how many cinema hall disappeared mm -hmm. you know literally in 2010 statistics and today you can see they went away arrival with digital more so with arrival of streaming platform and more so with pandemic 30% of theaters even in cinema halls in heart of hollywood they couldn't save it so what's going on here it's kind of interesting you know because now uh, the storytellers are everywhere video games virtual reality the boundaries are blurring everywhere but for me you know that experience of collective watching uh, going somewhere it's sacred territory it's sacred territory it's like we often called it temps you know filmmakers temple of <laughs> cinema or so there is something really wonderful and uh, as psychiatrists we say dream like quality that we just because till that till we don't sit down you know even though we don't know unconsciously we are allowing ourselves to surrender mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. we will just say like you know surrender i i was someone also pointed out to me i think uh, uh, the greek philosopher plato in republican okay he predicted thousands of year ago that there will be time in the future where people will gather in a dark room and they will sit down and they will feel chained to the light which is playing it's literally written there you That's should watch google it <laughs> you know and it's like what like and he did, you know so who invented cinema maybe it's him you know so that's what i feel uh, is what is going to go away or if it doesn't go away it will be controlled by five major studios i hear you and so i'm yeah. watching this film i'm thinking about you know the sight and sound just came up with their their annual their their decade list Sight and Sound, the, the oh, Sight and Sound, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Chantal Ackerman is at number one, but you know, I think my favorite film of all time is Bicycle Thieves. Oh, right. And I'm thinking of Spielberg. I'm thinking about all the children of cinema. I'm thinking of Truffaut, yeah, Antoine Duanel. But I'm also thinking about specifically here. I'm thinking of the Wild Child. Oh, Wild Child. Yeah, and yeah. I want to, I want to get a sense of you as an individual outside of this film. Do you feel a responsibility to this young actor? You gave a beautiful anecdote where he was. He was, he was still caring for his cows when he's in Los Angeles. I just, it melted my heart. Do you feel a responsibility that you brought this person, who's a non-actor, yeah. you brought him into this world, do you feel an extra parental or professional responsibility? Absolutely, to, to, absolutely. How does that, I mean, how do you negotiate that in your, in your mind? It's, it's a big challenge, you know, especially when we knew he's going to be in the cast, where he came from. And his parents were a bit like my parents, you know, they never go to see cinema because even now in modern time, they believe it's an immoral world. It's made up of bad people. They don't mm -hmm. go to see movies. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. his parents don't go. They do watch something. So it, 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 so we realize, okay. And at the same time, the audition we did only with his eyes, you know, we yeah. did 40 yeah. shots of his eyes. It was just so mind blowing. You know, and I knew that he's the only one who can save my film. We had done 3,000 auditions. That's crazy. You know, and we couldn't find. Twice I had abandoned the movie. I told producer, I'm going to lose your money. This film cannot be made by great director and cinematographer. You know, you need this vehicle. Yes. We will not, we will fall on our head. On top of that, I'm just putting this tribute to Tarkovsky. I should bury my head. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm going to be killed the, by The everyone. funeral was <laughs> almost there. Yeah. So... So when Bhavin came, we instantly knew the responsibility we have to take in terms of his family mm -hmm. to understand his life, not only be selfish and say, okay, shoot with us for a month and we forget about you. You know, so we spend a lot of time talking to him and we realize what he loves the most. You know, so we realize he still loves his countryside. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to go back. He doesn't like city. So we try to protect all that as possible. And even when this thing happened, you know, in, in the Oscar nomination, you know, so he, what happened with him was he went in, in, in his house, closed the door and danced alone. And then he came out and asked his dad, can you call Nalin me and say, ask him what is Oscar? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so he called, he said, Bhavin is da dancing. Can you tell him what is Oscar? You know, so you know he came from that space. So it was a big responsibility, and now we have slowly got to know him. Yeah. Because there is a natural talent of becoming an actor in him. Well, uh, he you has know, a he, charisma on the screen. That's, he wants that's, to do yeah. that. You know, and yeah. he was, and and we didn't know uh, that his parents were forbidding him to do TikTok reels oh before we met him. Okay. He said, "Why didn't you do that?" Because he said, "No, but I used to do secretly, then erase them." 
because in the school I was doing that and then in the school every time there was a poetry reading or somebody has to read teacher said he's the first one who will raise he was he didn't have fear you want to read yes I'll read it you know so we knew there was already that talent but we yeah. discovered that after yeah. we shot the movie yeah you know and uh, so we started talking to him we didn't want to force him to become an actor but we tell him you finish your education you're going to live your full life he yes. says, right now I don't want to go anywhere I want to live with my cows I want to live in my village I'm very proud of where I come from I love nature you know but I think I like acting you know I like this you know so you're going to uh, so we told him that we will be there with you all along great you know and uh, his parents wish is the education because he's very good in studies he's really really good I was totally horrible <laughs> so that's the contrast so he said we want him to study if he is you know I enjoy school so I said okay not like me I never enjoyed school so you enjoy school let's do your education so what we did with is even fees you know which he got as an actor we put it in a fund so by the time he's 16 when yeah. he really needs money that money would have tripled great you know great. and so like you can have access to that so my casting director Dilip Shankar he's actually does very few film he's a meditational teacher a great human being you know he's the one who found Suresh Sharma for life of Pi for uh, yeah. Ang Lee yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know and uh, you know so he, he does very few film uh, and he's really concerned when we do this because he's a great human being first then the casting director so he's always concerned is this humanitarian concern first and especially when it comes to non-actor so we knew that we are not taking on an actor for four months this is at least responsibility yeah, yeah. you know it's like adopting a puppy exactly and we both lived through that experience yeah in 2013 because I did a documentary called faith connection okay which we premiered at uh, Tribeca okay you know and after Darren Ornowski tweeted we sold it worldwide <laughs> but anyway there is a kid there 12 year old uh, you know who had come and lied to us while we were making documentary there is an orphan and 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 he will either become a greatest holy man of India or the greatest mafia don you know that's what fascinated us wow and we followed that kid through biggest pilgrimage see, I had, Kum, see Kum. I had like a Michael acted experience <laughs> in a way <laughs> so so that kid once he became central character of a film you know we created that for him in 2014 you know and yeah. he, he was 12 you know and then he was able to access the money to study Great. travel so he had that previous experience yes. and it worked as a sort it, of like it, yes a responsible template for, for you this you have here. to in India you know I mean I'm you know uh, uh, there's something which at least thanks to my parent I grew up with few compassionate and spiritual Hindu Buddhist belief that you just cannot be self selfish when it comes to your art you know you have to be egoless you know and uh, and that's I've always all of every time I made a movie I've just my seventh you know and two documentary feature at the end the, f the crew also becomes yeah. like a family yeah. and friends you know and over six seven movies I've literally had dozen wedding you know people who fell in love and got well, married. We've been following <laughs> you since some sam 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 Sarah, Samsara uh, uh, back in the Miramax days yeah. um, I'm going to cut it short, but I'm going to thank you so much thank for this film. So and yeah. honestly, the double bill with the Fable Men's needs to happen. So I hope somehow you cross paths in, in LA and you get to show each other, each other's films to each other. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.